right? So for electrochemistry, uh, what we're going to discuss is actually very uh, fundamental, very basic. Uh, it's not a uh, application. Uh, it's not very much an application of electrochemistry. It's very basic electrochemistry. So what we have gone through during your foundation study is almost similar to what we're going to discuss today. But of course, I would like to uh, introduce you, only introduce you, uh, the application of the electrochemistry. So it's not just what you have done in school, you remember what you, uh, you do, the, the, uh, if you have like uh, electro, uh, hydrolysis, water hydrolysis, or you do electrolytic where you coat the spoons with silver, or you actually do uh, lemon, <laughs> Electrochemical cell, okay. So those are the basics. Eh? Uh, actually, electrochemistry has advanced, eh? has uh, a lot of uh, application in the actual world. So it's good to know about electrochemistry, okay. So for for this topic, uh, these are the uh, learning objective, yeah, using Faraday's law, okay. So Faraday's law, we are going to discuss in tutorials eh, through uh, uh, exercise. Eh? So, so it's enough that we discuss, uh, know that one of the learning objective is Faraday's law. But we are going to discuss it in tutorial. So uh, in this topic as well, uh, we are going to discuss, describe the differences between electrolytic cell and galvanic cell. Uh, recognize which part is oxidation, the definition, what happened in oxidation and reduction, uh, half reaction in a electrochemical cell. Okay, you should be able to write half reaction as well as oral cell reaction. And then use the value of standard reduction potential, okay, E cathode, E anode, <laughs> to calculate a standard cell potential, E naught, okay. And from there, okay, of course, we will discuss about the spontaneity of a redox reaction. And remember, we have discussed in thermodynamic, okay, the spontaneity of a reaction. We have non-spontaneous reaction as well as we have spontaneous reactions. So remember, I hope that you still can, can still remember the difference between spontaneous and non-spontaneous reaction. And next uh, learning objective is to use nurse equation. Yeah? Of course, nurse equation is to calculate uh, cell potential. Okay? And then relate that cell potential with Gibbs free energy. So Gibbs free energy also we have discussed in thermodynamic and also a relation between a standard cell potential with equilibrium constant, so Kc. So we have learned all this, Gibbs free energy as well as Kc. So now we should look at the, the relation between cell potential with Gibbs free energy and uh, equilibrium constant. Okay, first and foremost, we have to understand the redox reaction because electrochemistry is about Redox. So what is redox? Redox stands for uh, reduction and oxidation. So it's a combination uh, of oxidation and reduction. It is called redox reaction. Okay. So here is an example: uh, ferrum two plus, okay, plus cerium four plus, okay, react, okay, redox reaction, and then you have a uh, ferrum three plus. Uh, form ferrum 3 plus and cerium 3 plus. So what happened is cerium 4 plus okay, accepts an electron from ferrum 2 plus forming cerium 3 plus and ferrum 2 plus forming ferrum 3 plus. So what we see here is cerium 4 plus is being oxidized, sorry, is being reduced. Okay. Serum, uh, cerium 4 plus is being reduced. Maknanya cerium 4 plus ni accept an electron. They're being reduced 
from cerium 4 plus and to cerium 3 plus. Yeah, you can see the oxidation number reduce. Yeah? So reduction happened to cerium 4 plus, whereas of ferrum 2 plus oxidize, release electron, yeah? being oxidized, forming ferrum 3 plus. So you can see when it is oxidized, the oxidation number is increased from 2 plus to 3 plus. Yeah? So it releases electron, it is uh, the process called oxidation. <clears throat> we can also call it as uh, CE4 plus is in an oxidizing agent because it is being reduced. So it is an oxidizing agent. Yeah, the, it, it oxidizes ferrum 2 plus. So ferrum 2 plus is being oxidized. So it's a reducing agent because it reduces uh, CE4 plus. <laughs> okay. So the redox reaction can also be separated in two half reactions. So this reaction, this net reaction, can be divided into half reaction. Okay. So here we can just put for ferrum two plus uh, oxidize into ferrum three plus. Okay. Release electron. Ce for uh, cerium four plus being reduced to Ce uh, cerium three plus receiving electrons. So this is half reaction, okay? Now, uh, the most important and sometimes difficult is to balance redox equations, yeah? So how, what are the tips that you can use to, uh, to balance redox equation? Of course, identify the species being oxidized and reduced. You need to know that. And write half reaction, just like this one. Write the half reaction, okay, and then balance reaction with respect to atoms and charge, okay, balance of oxygen and hydrogen last, yeah. So, if any, uh, you can see that the reaction involves oxygens and hydrogens, then you have to you have to consider H2O, <laughs> uh, acid, okay, to combine and then combine to form overall reaction. Combine is just to combine this this two half reaction, yeah? Right. So when you have to balance redox equations, please use these steps, yeah? Okay, so the next one is to look at different types of electrochemical cell. So how, how do you uh, define electrochemical cell. So in, in this is very basic. Yeah? In, in general, the basic that we have is galvanic cell yeah? or voltaic cell. Yeah? Sometimes it is called galvanic. Sometimes it is called, uh, it can be called also as voltaic cell. And we have electrolytic cell. So how do we define these two? Okay, galvanic cell Okay, it's all, it's, remember galvanic cell is not energy. Galvanic cell is not uh, current. Yeah? Galvanic cell is an electrochemical cell. <laughs> okay, galvanic cell is an electrochemical cell, which the reaction is spontaneous. Okay, I hope that you remember that we have discussed what is spontaneous reaction. And that spontaneous reaction can produce electrical energy. So that is a galvanic cell, eh? where electrochemical cell in which the reaction inside the electrochemical cell is spontaneous to produce electrical energy. Whereas electrolytic cell is an electrochemical cell where the electrical energy is provided means that you need to provide electrical energy for the reaction inside the cell to happen because it is a non-spontaneous reaction. Means that if you put it together, it will not react, it will not have any redox reaction unless you provide electrical energy. So that is electrolytic cell. And the electrodes in electrochemical cell for both huh, galvanic and electrolytic are anode 
and cathode. Yeah, call anode and cathode. So I'm sure that you have come across all these terms. Yeah. So anode is where the oxidation takes place. Oxidation release electron. Yeah. Cathode is where the reduction takes place. So reduction receive or uh, uh, receive electron. Yeah. So this is galvanic cell. So you can see that in this beaker, we have a spontaneous reaction. The chemical that you put here, the chemical reagents that you put here, uh, spontaneously react. And one of the, uh, of course, one of the chemicals will be oxidized, producing electron. So you can see electron is now moving here. <laughs> So there is a current produced, okay? And then that electron is being received by another reagent, another chemical. So that uh, uh, chemical or reagent or uh, element uh, will be reduced, yeah? just like if you imagine. Just now we have cerium and ferrum. So ferrum here will be, re will be uh, releasing electron, okay, current, and then uh, cerium here will be accepting electron, yeah. So reduction and oxidation. Okay, so I would like to introduce to you that this is what you know probably. This is what you know what you observe in class before that you have electrodes in a beaker, okay. But now, uh, the, the commercial, <laughs> the commercial one is already uh, very advanced. Uh, we have what we call a flexible electrode. So you can see how flexible the electrode is. And now it is uh, in the form of uh, uh, very small. So you can see that this is the, uh, the where the reductions and the uh, oxidation happens. So the electrode now is no longer big. It's no longer have to be in a big beaker. It's very portable. It's actually very small. Yeah? And then uh, I would like you to watch. Yeah? So this is example <coughs> of galvanic cell, okay, or spontaneous reaction, yeah? okay, so this is uh, it's actually pH electrode, yeah? so you are used to measuring pH, again. you put in the, uh, this, uh, this electrode inside the pH, uh, inside the solution, and then you measure the pH, so how does it work, so please watch this video to understand how the pH is being measured, okay? It's actually based on uh, a difference of potential, okay? So please do watch this, yeah? Okay, so now look at electrolytic cell. Eh? Uh, what is electrolytic cell? So again, imagine in front of you, there is a beaker. <laughs> you put in the chemical. You put in a chemical, but since it is a non-spontaneous reaction, it doesn't react spontaneously. So what you need to do is to supply current. <laughs> you need to supply current so that the chemicals that you put inside the beaker can react. Okay, one of it will be oxidized and one of it, one of it will be uh, reduced. Okay, so it, it requires external uh, power supply yeah? means that you have to supply current for the reaction to happen. If not, then there is no reaction. So that is not spontaneous. So you can see that the application of electrochemistry is very robust, it's very advanced. Okay, so this is me uh, taking picture with one of the advanced, one of the uh, high, high reputable researcher, Professor Wang. You can see that he has developed uh, an underwear <laughs> with uh, electrodes. Yeah? 
And this electrode can detect uh, the changes. Yeah, the changes in blood, sweat, or tears. Okay, let's say tears lah. Tears it means that it should be it should not be in in underwear lah. <laughs> blood, sweat. Okay, why why is it so? Uh, because this this blood sweat say, contain uh, salt, and this salt is actually uh, electroactive. Means that you can actually uh, read the current eh, if you have a good electrodes. So this uh, we can detect whether that soldier has had is under stress, is under emergency condition yeah, because of the stress level. Okay, so this one, you can see that the application of electrochemistry is now uh, beyond that you can imagine. Yeah? Right, uh, so you can see these are also application of uh, electrochemistry. Uh, this is for medical devices. You can, if you know, uh, there are some person who uh, who suffer uh, the condition what we call as uh, coagulation means that his or her blood tend to coagulate. So it is a very uh, serious condition because that might be fatal. They boleh mati. So so from time to time, uh, this this patient has to check their coagulation uh, condition whether they are. The blood is uh, is normal or is now at dangerous level for uh, for coagulation. So that's that's why we have certain analyzers, and now we also they are also developing um, uh, this uh, called uh, implantable. Okay, implantable. It can be inside your body. To detect uh, so that you don't have to withdraw blood or give samples. Okay, so it's already inside your body to measure all these uh, vitals. Okay, and you can see that this is also electrode, and the whole size of this is uh, the size of your bank card. Okay, and then with that, this bank card, you can actually uh, analyze. Okay, a lot probably you have cholesterol, uh, glucose, or urea. In just one simple cut, you can analyze quite a number of uh, analytes. So you can see how advanced the electrochemical field now uh, that you uh, usually look at uh, when you did in your class. In secondary schools, it's just bigger and with bulky electrodes. So now uh, we can have uh, implantable sensors, <clears throat> implantable inside our body, wearable as contact lenses, for example. Uh, you can uh, wearable also in it is embedded in our shirts, in our clothes, uh, shoes. Tattoo means that it, it can be tattooed in, on your skin. Uh, ingestible means that pills that you can ingest. Okay, uh, so these are mostly based on electrochemical uh, reactions. Yeah, and it's a lot more. Uh, you can see that uh, this uh, example of uh, electrochemical techniques that you can use, uh, it can be applied. Okay, uh, wearable clothes, yeah? mask. Okay, so mask can be used to detect uh, COVID-19 disease, smart lenses. You are, I mean, you are very familiar now with smart watches that can detect your heart rate. Yeah? Your, so those are based on, uh, some are based on electrochemicals. Yeah? All right, and this mine, uh, we, are, we really work on tuberculosis. Uh, with uh, my my research group uh, work real uh, focus on tuberculosis, and this is our devices that we have developed together with other group. Uh, for this is based on electrochemical technique as well. Okay. Uh, right. So Faraday's law. Okay. 
So, okay, these are all definition. Okay, one Faraday equal to, okay, so you do not need to memorize this because these are constant. So you can just, uh, under, you need to understand that one Faraday equal to how many coulombs. And it is for one mole of electron. I hope that you still remember this value is Avogadro number. Yeah? So one mole of electron contain this uh, 6.022 times uh, to the power of 23 electrons. Yeah? Right. Uh, okay. So this is Faraday's. Uh, so this is Faraday's equation. Uh, current is equal to charge. Okay, over times. Okay, so you must remember this uh, formula. Okay. So this is an example of uh, the usage of Faraday's law. Uh, calculate the, the mass of palladium produced by the reduction of palladium 2 ions during the passage of 3.2 amperes through a solution of palladium. Okay, for that. So now, of course, you have to write the half reaction. Remember that you have to write the half reaction. And this is the balance equation. Okay. Okay, Q charge. Okay, Q is, if we rearrange this equation, Q is I times T, current times, uh, times, current times time. <laughs> okay, so uh, given uh, the current is 3.2 amperes, okay, and then the time is 30 minutes, but since the equation must use in seconds, okay, so the 30 minute has to be converted into seconds. Okay, so from there, from the uh, from the Faraday, okay. Yeah, this one because we know that the Q, right? Okay, the Q that we obtain can also be converted into Faraday, and it is equivalent to one mole of electron, okay, remember that. So we can link uh, the uh, mole, okay, with the mole of palladium produced because if we can get two mole of electron, it can produce one mole of palladium. So you have to relate this with the mole of palladium. Uh, Produce, yeah. So try to look at this and try to understand. There's quite a number of uh, exercises on Faraday's law. Okay. So similar, as long as you can understand the the the, the Faraday, uh, the Q, and then convert to Faraday, as well as you can relate with the number of mole of electron, yeah. Okay, last one before we end is to understand the electrode potential. Okay, what does it mean, uh, electrode potential? Okay, so uh, let's look at the, the uh, diagram on electrolysis. Lah, eh? Electrolysis or, sorry, electrolytic or governing, it's either one. All right. Okay, so when we, when we talk about electrode potential, yeah, so we are talking about uh, the potential of each electrode. Okay, this is called electrode. And we are talking about the potential of each, each electrode. So if you watch the video just now, uh, you maybe watch it later. Uh, the current, okay, the current will move from uh, high potential to low potential, okay? High potential to low potential. So when we, we talk about the, the electrode potential, okay? 
Okay, when we talk about electrode potential, uh, it's actually measuring, uh, okay, measuring the ability of the movement of current. Yeah. So when we talk about potential, we cannot just measure single electrode. Yeah? It, it is a comparison. So because when we measure potential, we are talking about the difference in potential. So it has to be uh, from low current, okay, sorry, low uh, potential, sorry, from high potential to low potential. Okay, that is where the current move. Okay. So in order to have the electric potential, we have to compare. We cannot just measure, okay, single electric, measure the electric potential. Eh? So there is no method to measure potential electrodes separately, but the potential difference between the two electrodes can be measured. Okay, so electrode has the electrical potential, which is determined by the potential of the ions tendency to donate, okay, excess electron, right? So this is how we measure the electrode potential. Yeah? So you can see that here, even though you see that it's only, it looks like you only have one electrode, yeah? but there are two electrodes here. One is hydrogen electrode, the other one is platinum electrode. Okay, so this is how we measure. This is how we measure uh, the uh, electrode potential. So we need to compare it with standard electrode. So one of the standard electrode is hydrogen electrode. Yeah? Hydrogen electrode. So, so we consider hydrogen electrode as zero. So all these values, let's say you want to know the electrode potential for fluorine, electrode potential for argentum, electrode potential for copper. So all these were measured against standard electrode. So one of the standard electrode is hydrogen electrode. There are other standard hydrogen as well, uh, standard electrode as well. So the values that you get is potential of uh, reduction to happen. So E0 becomes more positive, E0, this one, yeah? the electrode potential. Yeah? The electrode potential, if it becomes more positive, the, te the tendency for reduction is greater. Means that this, though, yeah? Yeah? ferrum to plus compare with zinc to plus. Okay, So E0 becomes more positive means that 0 0.44 is of course much more positive compared to 0 0.76 because of the negative value. <clears throat> so if we mix together ferrum to plus and zinc to plus, mix together in a solution, we know that ferrum to plus will be reduced because it, it has a more positive electrode potential or in short, we call it E0. Yeah? So as E0 becomes more negative, the tendency for oxidation is greater. So same goes, let's say we are to compare Ag plus and copper to plus. So if we mix together copper to plus and Ag plus, we know that Ag plus has greater, uh, more positive, so it will be reduce instead of copper. So copper will be oxidized. So it's always a comparison. We cannot just measure one electrode. Okay, so this one is also a tabulated value. Value from, you can identify from constant table again. You can obtain the value from table. So I think we stop here. Uh, so for the next uh, one on Monday, we will uh, try to complete this. Uh, how to calculate eh, standard cell potential uh, as well as writing cell notation 
and calculate E cell by using Nernst equation. Yeah? And then the rest of it, uh, the equation, the um, relation between KS with KSP, with delta G, okay? and uh, E cell with uh, KC. Okay? So, so I hope that you can go back and try uh, at least try to find uh, the the any question on Faraday uh, Faraday law. Okay, try to calculate one and look at example. Okay, you can just browse in internet. Okay, so that you can understand the concept of Faraday's law. Any questions? <laughs> 